What is really, really interesting is when you go back and look at chiropractic's history, is in the year 1918, the largest epidemic of all recorded history in planet Earth occurred, and it's called simply the flu. The 1918 flu pandemic, according to Gina Collada, a writer for the New York Times, in her 1999 book called Simply Flu, she documents how the 1918 flu killed 100 million people on planet Earth in six months. This is more deaths than from all of the wars of all recorded history combined. So, and all the wars of all recorded history did it over, over, over many, many, many years. The flu did this in just six months. What is interesting in chiropractic history is in 1918, chiropractic was brand new, it was a baby. It was just starting. The first chiropractor uh, started, adjusted the first patient in the year 1895. So chiropractic is just barely 20 years old when, when the flu comes through town. And what independent healthcare observers noted is that those that chose manipulative management had only 1 40th of the death rate as compared to those who chose um, allopathic or, or, or drug-based management. And the result was chiropractors became licensed. It is so interesting to know from a historical perspective that chiropractors were licensed because of their ability to treat people with an infection, with flu. And while today we mostly look at chiropractors as someone who treats uh, sore backs and sore necks, etc., Back in our history, practically nobody went to chiropractors with aches and pains. They primarily went to chiropractors with infectious diseases, reminding you that this is in the pre-antibiotic and the pre-vaccination era of healthcare. The results when people had things like the flu, which doesn't respond to antibiotics, which they didn't have at that time anyway, they found that something happened to their immune system. Their immune system worked better when they were adjusted as compared to when, if they did not get adjusted to the point where they had only 1 40th the death rate. In fact, this continued, chiropractors continued to treat primarily infectious diseases during the first half century of our existence. When you go up into the 50s, and there's still old chiropractors out there that were practicing in the 50s, they'll tell you that their primary emphasis during that era of history was treating polio. They said for them to treat someone in an iron lung with polio and to take them out was just another day's work. Well, now most chiropractors have never seen polio, including myself. I've never seen anybody with polio. And what they find is that, uh, uh, consequently, it's only been since vaccinations and antibiotics that chiropractors have more emphasized on musculoskeletal aches and pains. Yet they've known throughout the first half of our existence, including with the flu pandemic of 1918, that chiropractors are doing something to influence the efficiency of the immune system. It wasn't until the year that my big daughter was born, my daughter Danielle, or actually, sorry, Danielle, my, my second daughter Candace was born in the year 1997. The finest spine journal in existence, it's called simply Spine. Number one, January 1997, this article comes out, and this article does the most incredible thing. It actually shows using genetic tracing that if you mechanically affect a single spinal ligament, like what a chiropractor would do when he did a very specific adjustment, that it sends information into the spinal cord that goes up and then influences your brain. <clears throat> but this article absolutely proved that this guy has a twig that comes over and talks to this guy, the sympathetic nerve which runs the immune system. In fact, you can see it on the abstract right here. It, identified the sympathetic ganglion, it fired right to the sympathetic nervous system every time they did a mechanical distortion. So when we talk about chiropractic and the immune system, these articles put together something that is, is, is relatively fun. The first thing they put together, once again looking at this article, is how important spinal mechanics really are to the system. They send lots of good information into the spinal cord and consequently, if you are not functionally sound, if you don't work right in a gravity environment, you're subluxated, is what the chiropractor says, you don't get the best information in here. If you do get the best information in here, it creates cerebellar plasticity, which is key to human potential, but they've also proven using this study from Spine, January 1997, that it will come over and communicate prominently, that's the actual word used, prominent communicate with 
the sympathetic nerve, which lives in the same layer. So they know that there's something about living together, which is why they are in a